Good day. Now I shall introduce the squeeze theorem and I will illustrate it with an example. So, what is the squeeze theorem? We, uh, if we have this right here, if we know that f of x is smaller than or equal to g of x, which is smaller than or equal to h of x. So in other words, g of x is always between h of x and g, sorry, h of x and f of x, and uh, for all values of x near c. In this case, this, this is our c right here, except possibly at c itself, and if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal so f of x is the bottom function, the blue line in this case here. And the limit as x approaches c of h of x, in this case it's represented by the red line. If those two are equal and they're equal to a value of a constant l right here, then it must be that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is also equal to L because they're essentially squeezing the G of X function with the H of X and the F of X functions since the G of X is right in between. So since the limit as X approaches C for H of X is equal to L and that's the same thing for F of X it must be that for G of X it's the same since it's squeezed in between the two functions. Fantastic. So now let's just do a, uh, a question here. Let's prove that the limit as x approaches 0 for x squared sine 1 over x is equal to 0. So how can we do that? Well, one thing that I know for sure about the sine of something is that it's always between negative 1 and 1. That I know for sure. And you should know that also, hopefully, if you've, if you've done trig before. So, okay, so far so good, but how is that going to help us prove this with the squeeze theorem? Well, now let's say that I multiply everything here by x squared. So I multiply the negative 1 by x squared, so I get negative x squared. I also multiply sine 1 over x by x squared. And look at this. Right in the middle, I get and 1 times x squared is also x squared. What we have here is exactly what we have over there. Right? So now, let's see what the limit is. So now, of course, this function in the middle is like our g of x, and we're squeezing it between negative x squared and x squared. So now let's evaluate the limit of negative x squared as x approaches 0. Oh, I can just plug in the 0 right there, can't I? Yes, I can, and that's just 0. But what about the limit as x approaches 0 for x squared? We're going to get the same thing. I can plug in the 0. I get 0 also. So it follows that the limit in between must also be zero because of the squeeze theorem, right? We, we know that the this function here, the limit as x approaches zero, zero. Same with the function that is supposed to be on top of the middle one. So this one gets squeezed in between them and the limit as x approaches 0 for x squared sine of 1 over x is also 0. That's it. Hopefully that made good sense. If not, watch it again. <laughs> and of course, watch more videos. And good luck.